On this episode of Franken PC, we do. Basically, there is a part where it has a lot of grills. Okay, here's something silly that I'm going to do. Curves. That curve. This is what I plan to design. Basically, there is a part where it has a lot of grills and it's a bit higher than the rest of the case. This is where it's going to be the cooling system. So you could accommodate, accommodate the fan and the height, added height of the new heatsink. On the top, there's going to be clear acrylic windows just because, well, come on. There's got to be a window to viewing the inside of this computer showing off its internals like that's the thing now you got to show the internals of the computer that's going to be the rear exhaust vents the right side with the ports left side where the dvd drive is basically like that the exhaust fan which is going to power off the 5 volt and then we got dvd drive is going to sit here that's basically going to be the way out Whew. i'm excited kind of excited actually this is what it's going to look like. And here's the thing about design. You want to do your design and then step back, leave it for a few minutes, few hours, and then come back. If you're still happy with the design, it means it's pretty good. You can still make revisions, like you can have more um, studies, essentially. Design a whole other one just for comparison, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the design. Time to make it a reality.
something silly that I'm going to do. I'm going to need to make a stencil of all these ports. I don't want to waste toner. Finally, taking shape. Curves. That curve. One of the best designs I have done so far to a computer. I think it could even be better than Honeycomb PC when it comes to the aesthetics. Now that is kind of exciting, kind of scary. It's vibrating right now. Like it's really vibrating. So I think I'm going to have to put these fans on some sponge mounting system. Definitely providing a good volume of air. That's for sure. Booted perfectly fine. Whew. We'll be right back after the break. I'm going to have to pull out for demonstration the, AM, the AMD Sempron processor underneath here because it's actually not too far from a modern AMD Ryzen chip or really any modern desktop chip. Here's the thing about thermal paste on, on heat sinks. Um, they kind of act like suction. Like like the locking mechanism is completely loose. Ah, oh, there we go. And for those who are not so techy, this isn't the CPU. This is the CPU. So this I just pulled out is a single core AMD Sempron processor. And for those who are more tech savvy, this is AM2. So this is the AMD Sempron LE1200. But this isn't so obsolete. This is an AMD Duron processor from like 1999. This is the processor itself. This is just a package that holds the processor, some resistors or whatever these things, I think capacitors, whatever. And then the pins that connects to the motherboard. This is a newer processor from like mid 2000s ish. As you can see, this is called a heat spreader. It's to distribute the heat for coming off the processor die to a much larger area and it's also the job to like distribute the weight of the heatsink. Now, why am I talking about that? This is the processor of Frankenstein PC. So first of all, yes, laptop processors are upgradable. I could plug in a, what generation is this? Like Sandy Bridge Intel processor, really. All laptop processors, I like this no heat spreader it's not common for people to even pick up a, the laptop's mobile processor this is really not a thing normally people would often say oh laptop means it's not a gradable processor it's soldered in not always the case look it up sometimes it's socketed in sometimes it's not it doesn't this doesn't have the sponges in the corners because well the heat sink that's normally on the laptop would pretty much 
already insert the perfect amount of force. Like it's designed to make perfect amount of force just to meet the um, the die. But of course, this isn't normal. What we're doing right now isn't normal. It's not standard procedure in any way. Like slapping a desktop heat sink on a laptop chip. Not remove the adhesive cover thing because we just need like there you go the spongy foamy characteristics of it sink dead center this is so bizarre <laughs> these things yeah these this thing clears it this clears it like you got a good amount of room Whew. and I didn't crack the die because if I did crack the die damn it I'm gonna have to Buy a new one, buy a new chip for this. Got my own tool bit from my rotary tool. Gonna turn a little bit. Basically made a dent. It is deep enough. Doing precision. Precision is easier in the rotary tool. This thing, not so much. There we go. Okay, a fuckload of sweat later. And we get an AMD heatsink with holes in it. I have screws that go through the go to the heat sink and then I have springs pull the heat pull the heat sink towards the motherboard and thus the processor die are not aware this is a motherboard for a 14 inch laptop and I just successfully slapped on an AMD 45 watt stock heat sink Okay, so I originally planned that this would be finished by tonight or at least by tomorrow and then do some b-roll shots in my grandmother's garden and then edit it, upload it, and then fly to San Francisco. It looks like I don't have enough time to be able to do all of that because I just realized there's just so many things that I still have to do. I'm gonna have to paint this outside, the entire outside of the body, which means I have to mask out everything else. You know what, let's put it together. Might as well finish part two with it fully working. Yeah, expect a video coming soon with my other US trip. The thing is the power switch here is a special shape. But anyway, it's a special shape. I have to make an enclosure for it. Like I'm gonna have to make some space to hold it in place. And then to hold the button like there's supposed to be an SD card slot here. The problem is the actual SD card is too deep into the board. So but other than that, all right, hard drive. Not the hard drive. This thing is not gonna get into an OS. Of course. I actually ordered a cheap SSD from AliExpress, a 32 gigabyte King Diane SSD. It's not the best SSD. I'm not gonna. I don't trust it to be placed in a mission critical machine, like a comp computer of anyone really. But for a computer like this, like 
it's not going to be doing any much right. I just needed to boot into an OS, boot into Linux, and and make sure Linux runs nice and snappy without being bottlenecked by a hard drive. I'm double checking, making sure I didn't forget to plug in anything other than Wi-Fi, speaker, exhaust fan. Oh, right. I don't have like channels for channel the air from the intake fan to the cooler. And now here's how I close it. It's actually now a toolless mechanism. So now I don't have to grab a screwdriver every time I have to open it. Also, I haven't installed the BIOS battery yet. <laughs> oh, right. And also the top width. See, there's so many things still missing. It actually looks like the one in the 3D model and it's so nice. Like all the light actually bounces the same as I expected it to be. We look at power. I could feel exhaust coming out. Is the optical drive working? Oh, oh yes, it is. Like just pin the CPU, even though this thing can't play 4K. Now, the thing is it can't actually play 4K, but it stresses the CPU anyway. And that is still enormous delta, that's a 10 degree delta! Okay, see that it's kinda high? I'm gonna try to zoom in. It's kinda high. Temperature's kinda high here. It's, it's a mess. It's a 10 degree delta crap. Now I hold the heatsink here on its right side. Uh -huh. It plummeted. Temperature just plummeted even though the CPU is still pinned to 100%. I found the issue. The issue is that it is not tight on one of the sides. My hand is kind of painful now. Ah. And the temperature, yep, it has spiked to 80 degrees. Let's stop it now. On the next episode of Franken PC Redo. By the time you're watching this, I am already in California. And I actually brought my laptop here to the US so I could edit this video and get it up and stuff. And because of that, Franken PC is way back, halfway across the world back into the Philippines, of course.